Hello, my beautiful creative friends. How are you today? I am excited to be here again, just to show you like one of my favorite mediums that I love using um, when distressed oxide inks, and not, sorry, not inks, when distressed oxide sprays came out, I really, really kind of fell in love with them. And I've used them so much in my, um, in my war, in my like projects. And then I haven't used them in a very long time and I figured you know what let me uh let me get them out because I feel like I have not like used them in a while and I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by them because they're number one they're sprays and number two they are like very opaque and very strong colors um so let's get started I'm going to switch the camera and I'm going to show you so one of the things that I, I like using with the stress oxides is I like using um, things like a watercolor paper. It's really important. Oh, hi, Deborah. Um, so I like using watercolor paper, but I also love using Bristol paper. So any of these two would work. Uh, there are a lot of mixed media papers you can use as well. There's basically like so much. You want to make sure that it's thick enough. Like uh, this one is a hundred pounds, but not every hundred pound paper will work. Uh, you can definitely, I love the watercolor, um, 140 pounds that works really well. So these are the kind of some of the options that you can use and I'm just gonna move them aside. Uh, these are some of the samples and some of the techniques that I'm gonna be doing. So I just kind of kind of put them on the side to show you. And um, yeah, so that's it. So I actually cut out, I already pre-cut some of the papers. I just cut them in little rectangles. So they're easy to use. And I'm going to start with one of my favorite techniques. And that is uh, basically just like inks, like spray smooshing. And I'm gonna use Bristol for this. I did uh, do it with the watercolor paper and I think it didn't, work as well as I wanted it to work. So I think maybe a smooth paper will work better. And I'm going to use a couple of colors to just show you. I really, really love this technique. It's one of my favorites. And I'm just going to show you how it works. Um, let me see. So one of my favorite colors to use for this is cracked pistachio. And I also love uh, some kind of like, I know it's not a common one, but walnuts, no, I like the vintage photo. So I like creating like this patina-like effect. So um, that's what I am going to aim for because I really, really like it. And I think I'm gonna take also, I like the peacock feathers. I'm just picking a few colors and kind of going with it and some yellow, okay, so. So for this technique to uh, work, it's super easy. You're, we're just going to smoosh things on a paper and um, and basically like you know do different things with it. Uh, let me see. Everything, everybody's yeah. Okay, everybody's here. I don't know. Nobody's chatting, and I just feel sometimes like I talk to myself when this is happening. Okay. So let's start with the lightest color. I always like starting with the lightest color. I'm gonna use fossilized amber. Remember when you use sprays, you always want to shake side to side. Don't shake up and down because it will clog the spout. And I'm going to just kind of spray these on my mat. And I wanna put them in different areas so that way I don't get them all mixed. And I'm just going to kind of run them randomly press on this and kind of create this effect, okay? Okay, so there we go. I'm just, this is basically what I did, just that, okay? So now I'm gonna just spray somewhere else because I might go back into this one. I'm gonna spray the cracked pistachio. Uh, and yeah, I guess I, for, I forget that people make notes on things. Yeah, thank you. Making notes is a good idea. So, uh, so crack pistachio and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing you're going to kind of grab and you don't want to like fully push it into the background just kind of um a put this in the into it okay and just kind of press 
And this is what it does. It kind of creates this type of effect, okay? And you can move it around in different directions and it will just create, it will overlap each other. And what's nice about them is that when they react, oh, hi, Tiffany, hi, Mercedes. Um, when they react, they they basically create like these really cool effects between them. So that's what I love about the Distress Oxide inks that um, they work really well to um, together. So that's uh, something that you want to, sorry, my mom is messaging me and I forgot to tell her that I was doing a live show. That's what's always forgetful. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna add some of this one. And why I like these colors together is that, because as I said, it creates kind of like that patina effect. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this color. And I think it is kind of working better on the Bristol paper. So that's something good to note. That if you're writing, if you're making notes, uh, you want it, the paper to be a little bit smoother. So I really, um, I really like that. Yes. So, and yes, Tiffany actually just made a video. It's important if you want to go to Tiffany Soloria's channel, she just made a video about papers and the difference and how they can be used for, for certain, for certain mediums. And it was really helpful because if you're you're not sure which paper to use, that would be like something. And she actually compared Bristol with watercolor paper. So it does make a difference, whatever paper that you use. Um, so there we go. And now I'm gonna put brown. Okay, so and wow, this is vintage photo. Uh, you want to put the darkest color at the end, and again, like lightly press on it. Don't like don't like press too hard because then you're gonna get blotches instead of um, instead of actual designs. Whoa, there we go. That's really nice. Oh, I like that. Okay, so now you can go back and say you wanna add more yellow. So when I'm calling them yellow, I'm not actually calling them by their actual names. You can add more, yeah, more of the fossilized amber in certain areas that say like, certain places are missing and they start mixing even more. And you can leave some uh, some empty spaces as well, or you can try to cover it all. But look how yummy this texture is. It's stunning. So this could work uh, for a collage paper. This could be a background for a card. This could work in your art journal. Basically, like you can use it for anything. You could actually smoosh a small art journal into this back into the into the background and create things as well. So I am just loving this texture. And this is like the simplest thing to do, honestly, like how much simpler it is than just pushing things. Okay, I think I'm done. I don't want to go over it too much. And this is just stunning. Uh, in my opinion, okay, well, like, you know what I mean? So I'm going to let this dry. And I'm just going to clean my surface. I know, I mean, hopefully you guys don't mind that I waste a little bit of things. But uh, basically, um, uh, if you don't want to waste it, you can just uh, do it again. But I do find that you need a little bit more kind of water, not water, like it has to be more watery in order for it to work. So the reason while I clean up, I want to tell you why I'm I'm showcasing this. So one of the things that I realize about, you know, people in general, especially people that are get started on mixed media is that they have this fear of like being messy, of messing up of not having a perfect background, a perfect layout. And you can see, this is for me perfect, even though there's so much imperfection in this. And what's important is that you need to kind of experiment. And one of the things that people I find are very afraid, especially my students, is that they end up really afraid of trying things for messing up or being like, you know, just, just in general. So I decided to do uh, mixed media class. This is like 10 techniques with mixed media. I won't be doing anything with distressed oxide sprays because I'm doing the class, like, so you know, like a little demonstration today. But there's a lot of very helpful to me techniques, things like using modeling paste, how to use modeling paste with sprays, how to use modeling paste and and knowing how when to when to dry it, when to when to create, uh, when to do. I'm gonna have lots of techniques with uh, watercolors and other things to kind of create very cool textures. So if you do want to sign up for that, the link is actually in the description. Oh, I think Tiffany just put it. Thank you, Tiffany, for sharing. Uh, so you can just press on that, and that 
will help you. Like um, we're going to do it like this step by step. You can come and create with me on a live stream and then uh, I will have a Zoom after week where you can come and ask any questions. So as throughout this uh, this to, uh, this uh, live class today, I'm going to show you uh, some of the techniques that we're, sorry, I'm going to show you some of the samples of the techniques that we're going to be doing. Uh, one of the, I'm going to continue on because I don't want to like overwhelm you with this information, but it's a very inexpensive class. So if you want to expand your techniques in mixed media, this is the, this is what you, you can do. Uh, okay. So now we have these, this technique, it's basically the same technique done two different ways. And I'm going to have, I'm going to test like, you know what, let's test the two different, uh, papers with it. So this is how it works. Uh, uh, so, hold on, I should move this. Okay, so now let's use different colors. So now I, I recently bought a color that I have not yet used. I think it's the saltwater taffy. So I figured, you know, I literally just opened it. So I'm like, let's use it, why not? And honestly, I think it would look so good with the cracked pistachio. I know that orange and green maybe don't mix, but with distressed oxide ink, one of the things that I love about distressed oxide inks, and you can hear the excitement in my voice, is that they can be mixed. Like the rules of colors don't apply so much to them because they actually react differently than acrylics, than watercolors. So you're not going to get a brown soup if you mix them together. So even if I'm mixing here like a coral with like this color, even though green and orange, you would not really want to mix them in with a, with acrylics because you will get brown. Here you can uh, use them. And yes, I have not used salt water taffy because I bought this. This is how long this was. So I guess this is the last time I used it because I, you see it's a brand new one. Okay. So the way I'm going to do it as I'm going to do it two different ways. Uh, okay. So one of them, we're going to let it dry and the other one, we're going to work on it right away and we're going to use the same color. So basically what I'm going to do, I just want to move some things out of the way so I don't spray on them. You can see it's a brand new one. Oh, it looks so pretty. Okay. And I'm going randomly in different places so, um, so I can mix them together. Now, just so you know, if you... Um, if you don't want this to kind of lift up, you can definitely put tape um, on and hold the paper together. I just don't do this. <laughs> so it's terrible. I you know I am like a, not like the greatest at doing these type of things. I like more of the salt water taffy. I really like this one. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, it's a really pretty color and I don't even love pink, but I do love coral. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So um i think i like it like this unless i could put what color could i put here no i don't want to put any color maybe i know i like yellow but yeah that's good it's interesting because i would never do this combination otherwise but it looks so good so color combinations are sometimes um you know are like kind of like you don't know what you're gonna get so this one i'm gonna let dry Okay, so it's going to sit on the side for a second. And what's nice about this is that look at all this yumminess that I have. So I could go in with another uh, another background and just kind of, you know, not waste anything if I really wanted to. You can even do like a dragging thing where you can drag things through it. Oops, hold on. That's cool too but I look this smushing better. Okay, let me put this on this side. Let me use everything that I have. This is a really nice combination. Okay, I'm loving this combination. If you like combos of colors, I think Tiffany also has like free PDFs that you can download with combos or color. So if you don't want to waste things, look, this is a really cute background and we can build on it. So I'm gonna leave it to go, like leave it like this, okay? So now this one, I'm. what did I say? This one I was going to, let dry so this is the one i want to work on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a stencil and this is actually one of my stencils that i designed for joggles and i'm going to put it here all the links to all the products are below in the description 
And what you want to do is you take a baby wipe and you're going to basically remove through the stencil, okay? And this will create a really, really wonderful background. You're gonna see in a second. Let me, so I'm basically just removing. Okay. And, whoa, okay, that's good. So maybe just, I'm just soaking it up a little bit so you can see the design. So you actually get this really, really light and really nice design. I'm using uh, smooth uh, Bristol Smooth. This is the one Bristol Smooth, and I'm using watercolor paper, 100 pounds three, uh, or 300 GSM, whichever way it comes. This one is, um, there's different brands. This is, is, this is Canson, I think, and the other one is uh, Stratmore, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So this one I'm gonna let dry. This one, look how pretty this is, okay? So you can just really create really cool design. While this one's drying, I'm going to show you another really, really interesting way to work with uh, the Distress Oxide inks. Again, let me just clean. So, yeah. So one of them, as I said, is Bristol Smooth. The other one is this. So this is what's nice about coming to a mixed media class, like the ones like I do, the one that Tiffany does. Uh, they're not only inexpensive, but they also, what they help with is they help you to kind of have everything concise in one place. So if you are interested in learning more mixed media techniques, and I'll show you a couple of others. Well, I am... Um, I'm like cleaning and stuff like that. So there's other things like things like mark making. It's a technique that it, it, I mean, it's called, called mixed media because we mix them with different things, but we can create things like mark making with different uh, products. Okay, so this is like this. And then we're gonna making these really cool texture backgrounds with watercolors. So that's another way. So there's gonna be lots of different techniques and I'm gonna take you step by step through them. So that's why it's important to like, um, kind of like take it all in and you can rewatch it of course afterwards if you choose to. Okay, so now I'm gonna use uh, two watercolor uh, papers. Okay. So another really fun technique to do is that you can actually uh, use a stencil with them. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So this is like a dual technique and only I'm gonna show you both. This is another one of my stencils, um, Geometric Star, I think it's called. You know what, I actually don't remember <laughs> the names of them, that's silly. I should have looked at them beforehand, but um, I am, I, yeah, so, but the, the, the link is below for, for joggles that so you can get these stencils and they're really great. They're, I'll show you some other ones soon as well. Now let's use some of the colors that I really love, which is, this one is um, shaded lilac and let's mix it with pink. Why not? Let's make this, oh, kitsch flamingo. I like that one. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Oh, sorry. Let me get one more thing ready. Uh, we're going to also use modeling paste. We're going to use modeling paste in the other side. Um, so, yeah. So this is a fun technique. You might think this is crazy, but it is fun to do. So I'm going to spray this side. Okay, so let's just spray through. This They work. And you want to hold this on like on a 45-degree angle towards the thing. It's hard to see in the video which way I'm holding it. And I usually use my thumb because I have a hard time because I have a, some arthritic pain in my hands, but you don't have to hold it the way I do. Okay, so, and they give such nice coverage, right? So that's why I like about them. Okay, I should have. Okay, so now what I do is I am going to lift it up. So that's a pretty design, right, on its own. And I'm gonna put it up here. Now you could actually put it upside down and it will kind of stamp it, but that's not what I'm gonna be doing. I'll show you in a second. So let me move this over here. And I'm going to take my modeling paste and while the stencil is still wet, I am going to basically mix the modeling paste with the ink, with the spray that I already have on here. 
and it will turn whatever color is there. So for example, here it will turn pink because I have the pink, pink flamingo, whatever it's called, okay. And then I just realized I should take it out with a different, and then I don't wanna mix my colors inside. And then here it might turn purple. So when you actually add it to the background, it turns whatever color you have, whatever six. Now you can also do this with inks. You can actually ink on top, but that's not something I'm showing you today. Okay, and the colors, of course, I'm mixing a little bit too, which I really like. So it's a really fun technique to do. And you get to kind of try it with something that you know might you might not use on a regular basis. Now, modeling paste comes in like white. So if you do want to, as I said, like mix it and make it into colors, you could mix like things like mica powders or any type of powdered paint like Lindy's. But in this case, you can actually use your sprays because you, you could spray on top and I'll show you that as well, but this is a completely different thing. And here it is. Oh, I like that. So of course with any mixed media, you're not gonna get the perfect design. And that is part of like, that's part of mixed media that you are going to get things that will be uneven and will be like kind of running, but that's okay because that looks, that kind of um, helps the design as well. Another thing you could do if you don't want like the white background, you could have, we could have sprayed this whole thing and in, uh, in white as well. Sorry, we could have sprayed the whole thing in a different color. So let's let's uh, let this dry, and we can actually spray on top if we really want to afterwards. So I'm gonna put it aside, and I'm going to clean. Now make sure that you always clean your stencils whenever you use modeling paste. So that's um, a really important thing to do. I find that with when I use sprays, I do need a lot of baby wipes, especially because everything becomes so dirty. <laughs> So yeah, and I wanna clean my, my silicone brush. I love these ones. This is like, I used to use the Finabar, Finabar silicone brush, but I don't think they sold anymore. And these I love, these are Princeton Catalysts. I, I listed these as well. They're really great. Like they're really great to apply things on them with them. So that's another option that you have. Okay, let me just go clean this up. All right. Okay, so let's give you another option to do as well before I get back to the other one. So I'm gonna get one more of the stencils and a piece of paper. And where did it they go? All those papers that I was that I had. Now you could also work in like journals. So you could work inside like a journal, you can work inside like we use the disc bound journals. So that's a possibility as well. Here's another one of my designs. It's like a mandala style stencil. And, <clears throat> and I'm going to use modeling paste, but just put it just plain white, okay? So just show you that you can do this. Now, modeling paste needs to dry first before you apply anything else, but I'm going to just do that, okay? So, okay, so just applying this, this is a mandala throughout the whole design. And I like the silicone brush because they're soft. So you can just kind of go over the stencil and it will not get caught in the little pieces that stencil size have. And then just put the rest, the rest back. <clears throat> So there we go. Now we're gonna lift it and it looks so pretty. I'm gonna let this dry. So I'm, I'm, you can definitely heat set it, but because I wanna show you something else, let's let it dry a little bit in the meantime. And I'll show you another thing that I did. And in the meantime, this will dry. So we're good. Again, clean the thing. If you have a water bucket, which I rarely do because I always forget them, you can do that, okay? So there we go. 
So this is good. I'm gonna I'm going to do this. So let's go back. I'm going to dry this a little bit. It's almost fully dry. This is the one that I did the second sample. Just quickly going to dry it. because I want to show you what I did with, I can use a different stencil this time just to show you, okay? So in the other example, you can see here, we removed it right away. I didn't wait until it dries. And in this one, I wanted to wait until it dries and I'm gonna show you the difference. Now there are also two different papers, so that makes a difference as well sometimes in how, um, in how it reacts, but that's okay. That's why I really encourage you to experiment. It really makes a difference. For this one, I'm gonna use oops, a different stencil. This is uh, another one of mine, just so. Oh, right, let's do like a corner design this way. And again, I take a baby wipe. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different things here. So again, you're going to remove And you remove. So what happens is that because the baby wipes have kind of like a watery effect, they they create this effect. Oh, and I just realized, oh, look how pretty that is. But I just realized the paper was a bit too, like I, I pressed too rough. So again, that's OK. That happens, OK? And hopefully. I won't do it that strongly next time, but look how pretty that is when you actually remove. So this, I went too hard here, but the other ones, I was just like really rubbing hard. I was worried that it wouldn't come off because when I did it last time, it didn't show as much. So I was worried that it wouldn't. So that's why I went and, um, and, and did it a little bit harder, which, oh, well, that happens. Um, the other option you have, okay, so let me just, um, Kind of put it on this side is that you can spray water through it okay so let me show you now um if you will spray water once once things are dry oops okay it creates uh it the water kind of in, reacts with the with the distressed oxides and when you wipe it off you can also use uh dab it off or you can use it with a paper towel uh, it's a sorry i will add, yeah i will answer that in a second if you use it for the paper towel it works not as great as the one when you rub it off but it does give you like a little bit of an effect i know that it, i've done it before maybe it's the paper but yeah it didn't work as well as i thought it would so let me just rem remove and this time i will not rub as hard so yeah the water is supposed to work i don't know what happened there yeah so i like it so i think it depends on what two layers are on top of each other and i think because i already added water here it kind of reacted now somebody's asking um what mat am i using it's actually not a mat this is actually like a it's not even a mat it's actually uh i don't even know what it is i found a stack of a recycled like plastic paper that has like kind of a uh, like a sheet and let's explain it um it's like a contact sheet or something like that and i usually what i do is i use both sides and reuse them reuse them until they're too dirty and then i throw them out so because i, I like having a big uh size of it so it's not the, the the um the tonic one is is the gray one that you can see underneath in this part and not tonic, that might be something else. You know what, not all of them are big enough. That's what I find. But yeah, the tonic one is good, the one that she's referring to, Tiffany. So yeah, so there we go. So this is, I really like how this turned out. So again, one of the things, it's okay to like make mistakes and don't rub too hard. I think here with the water, I kind of made a little bit of a mistake and that's okay. Uh, but let me show you like what I like doing with these backgrounds. So the modeling paste is still drying. And that's one of the things that I really like to kind of emphasize in my class. This is really important that you understand this. 
it's okay to make mistakes, especially, that is why mixed media is so forgiving. That's why I love mixed media so much because mixed media is forgiving. And, uh, and it's like, even if you make a mistake, it's okay, nothing happens. So I just like that because of it. So if you uh, want to kind of dabble into that world and get into the world of mixed media, or you're already in the world of mixed media, but you want to learn more techniques, or you want to, you know, like kind of advance some of the techniques, you can you can come and join. Uh, the class is on March 23rd. It, it's going to be live. Uh, it's 1 p.m. Eastern and Eastern and March 23rd. But you can definitely, um, uh, how do you call this? Join, uh, join, watch it afterwards. Okay, so that's the same. Now I'm going to be using the back of this paper because I think I ran out of paper, and I want to show you like a really cool technique as well. Okay, so let's pick some more colors. So um, let's see, what do I want? I want to maybe get some darker colors. Oh, there is the link. Yes, Tiffany just posted the link for my video. Oh, another one that I have sealed. Look at this, chipped sapphire, sapphire. Oh my gosh. See, this is what happens. I still told you, I haven't used these in a long time. This is a, so, okay, let's open it up. Can't believe I have not used this in a long time. So, um, oh, thank you, Darlene. Oh, Darlene signed up for the class. Um, so I think you just signed up for the class. I'm almost sure I saw your name come through. Um, so yeah, so you can read, you can buy any of the stencils at Joggles. Um, they're a US company. They have, they sell everything that we love and they have their own products, which is really cool. Foam stamps. I also have foam stamps with them. It's not something that I'm using today, although I could show you how to use them with sprays. So that's cool as well. I didn't plan for that, but you never know. Sometimes not planning for something is also planning. Okay, so let's mix chip sapphire. Oh, this is pretty. Okay. And I want to mix it with, I'm going to mix it again with, I let's think, uh, what is this called? Cracked pistachio is one of my favorite. Oh, that's pretty. Together. Okay. Oh, let me move all my papers. I'm spraying everywhere. Okay. Okay. So none of the things that um, that uh, distress oxidings do is that react really nicely with water. So first, I'm going to show you in one sort of size. I kind of want to. Yeah, you see, like they kind of have this really cool reaction with water, but this one is just a bit too wet. So let me dry it a little bit. And yeah, I love how it moves. This is really pretty. Yeah, These, this color combo is really nice. Wow, I like that. Maybe I sprayed a bit too much. So it takes longer to dry when you're when you sprayed so much. So what I want to create is those really nice droplets. But I think it needs to be dry in order for it to do that. And we're gonna go back to the other ones. I just want to the one with the modeling paste. And you can also use like a very thick white gesso for this as well for the same technique with the modeling paste oh this is a really nice combination i really like it okay so now i'm going to spray my hands and just okay and let it sit there for a few seconds let it sit because you want it to sit um so it uh, kind of reacts with the background so this is the my impatient one that i want to always like right away tap dab it out but i'm gonna be patient actually yeah i don't want it to be fully dry because i want to be able to take it so you make a few seconds let's see let's test to see how if it, it worked it worked already oh yes it did okay <laughs> i want I didn't want it 
you know, you're live, you want to make sure that things work. Oh, these are so cool. It's one of my favorite, favorite ways to use the distress. Their reaction to water is beyond amazing. Oh, wow. So, okay, I want to do more just because. It's actually, they don't only react to water, they also react to themselves. Like, so how cool are these backgrounds? This is a really good technique to do for a really a nice mixed media background. And also really good if you're doing um, um, how do you call this? Like a background for card or even inside an art journal. So either of that. And you could even use the paper towels, save your paper towels. You could use them for things. Okay. So this is really pretty. Look how pretty that is. This is stunning. So Okay, so Darlene's asking, what is the advantage of spraying in the hand and spritzing the design over? So the only reason I'm spritzing in my hand because I wanted to kind of control where the water droplets are going to go. Ma, if you, it's hard to see, but if you actually see the, uh, my spout, depending on what spray bottle you have, this one kind of sprays like, almost like a, like it will spray it like a circle. I'm trying to think if I have something to show you what I mean. Um, let's see if it will work here, okay? So, now this, well, if if I do this, like I'm just, you're gonna see the wetness of it. It's gonna be a circle, it's kind of sort of see. It's gonna turn it into a circle. I'm not gonna get the splat, the spatters, like the, this, the little droplets. And I want to get droplets. So in order here right now, I got like water everywhere here, okay, and everywhere here instead of getting the little splatters that you have that you see right here. So it comp it, it's a different uh, technique, okay. You could spray, but then you're gonna get kind of blobs instead of little droplets of spatters, okay? Does that make sense? Um, uh, oh yes. Yeah. So if you so I so. This one will spray similarly to how you spray this. So you will get the same thing. If you want to get more coverage, then definitely you want to do that. But if you want to get the effect that it looks like little splatters of color, then um, then you use your hand spritzing. Yeah, unless you have some kind of, uh, you can also do them with a brush. So for example, I could go in with a water brush. Okay, let me just show you. So let me take this back for a second. Let me put this back, so I'll show you. Yeah, so you could also go back with a paintbrush and a water brush and just splatter this way. That would work as well. So you could just have water and you can do splatters. I just use my hand, but it's like instead of using a brush. If you want to cover more area, that's a different story altogether. Then you can do, like you said, the circles and cover it a lot. But I, because I was doing kind of like a resist technique, you want to uh, make sure that you, you, if you want to get like this splatters the kind of design, then you want to do that. So a paintbrush would work as well. Um, bye, Tiffany. Thank you for coming. Um, okay, so that's things. So now we have this. Um, I hope that makes sense what I said. But that's the good. This is why coming to a class is good because uh, it's an intimate setting where you can ask questions, and that's great. And we're also going to have in that my after right after the class, we're going to have um, a a Zoom session where if you have any questions that you didn't get answered, you can get them done then. Um, so I'm going to dry this up. I think it should be fully dry. It's almost fully dry. So, uh, so there we go. And I'm going to spray these and I'm gonna use the same two colors because I love them so much. So, um, So this is spraying on top of modeling paste. And like you asked about it, Darlene, uh, these are gonna spray in kind of that circle tone that you wanted. So this is what would happen. So if I want to get splatters out of this, you want to, you would like, I'll show, actually, I'll show you how to get splatters out of this. So let's, that's the next, another technique that you can do. So as you see, um, as you can see, I meant to say, I did write three techniques and I forgot to change that because once I did all the, <laughs> once I, I kind of got around to do it, I realized that there's so many techniques. So here is like this one. So it, this is how it is, but let's not waste what we have in the corners and just kind of 
mix it here. Ooh. Oh, and there's some purple that came in here too. So I'm just mixing it here as well. Okay. Ooh, that's so pretty. Okay, hold on. And I want a little bit more of this cracked pistachio in this corner. That's so pretty. So you could, and this is what I was gonna show you, you could open up the actual bottle. And if you wanna get some like splatters, you can just use it to splatter her around. And that I like doing as well. So if you wanna get a little bit of the paint or the oxide spray in certain areas, you can just do that. And it will mix if it's wet, but you can also do it when things are dry. So let me dry this up so you can see. Um, Keep on losing my dryer, even though it's attached to the socket. So I'm going to dry this. Okay, this is so pretty. It's like a okay. I love this so much. Okay, so just a little bit dry, so I can actually show it to you. So now if you went, now that it's dry, if you actually went with the splatters, they will actually stay. They will not kind of mix with the rest of the colors. And you could also use the splatters this way where, let's use, I need this. If you want smaller splatters, you can just bang on this and this creates the smaller ones as well. Okay, so there's like two options for that as well. I want to try something. I've never tried this before, but I want to try it. Which stencil did I use? I used this stencil, so I think I used this one. Let me just, um, yeah, it looks like an embossed card. You're right. Okay. So let me um, just dry it a little bit. I just want to dry the splatters that I just added. So I haven't added any, I haven't added any water to this. Sorry, I'm just going to kind of dab this off a little bit because I want to quicken the process. Uh, okay. So I am going to put the stencil back on. I'm going to kind of line it up. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Yes. No, did I, didn't I line it up? No, I did not line it up. One second. Okay, now I've lined it up. I want to see if it will work. If I could like kind of make the raised areas a little bit lighter carefully i don't want to raise any of the modeling paste so i'm not going to press hard but i think it might work because now you can leave it the way it is and just have it just have it a like you know the way you said like it looks like embossed but i just wanted to take it one step further so I guess you could spray water. And this is why I said, like, if I sprayed water, it should have worked. But I don't know why um, it didn't before. Okay, so let's see what happens. I don't actually know where I went already. Okay, so let me see. Did it do anything? In some areas it did, it kind of brought it up. And it actually, oh yeah, I did remove, see some of my modeling paste wasn't dry. So that is an issue. <laughs> so this is why like um, you have to be so careful when you're drying, um, things happen, but it's easily fixable. Let me show you how we fix this. So nobody gets stressed about it. Okay, let me show you how to fix it. Although I really like that. Let me show you how we can fix it. We can just take um, the, the design and we just add some of it here and here. Or even we could like spray some of it and cover it up. There we go. And then we have it all done. And I can even run, uh, this looks cool. This is another way you can do it. You can, you can get the drips to show through the stencil. So it kind of creates uh, dark marks around it. So yeah, so make sure that you always wait. Look at the beautiful yumminess that is here. 
I wonder what happens if we activate it. Okay, so I might use the, oh, let's see, that's already the background. I'm gonna activate the background. So you could like, oh, this is nice. Okay, so let's activate the water. So it, it, it will give you a different effect when you're using the um, water to do things. Ooh, so I'm just don't want to waste. So there we go. So that's cool. It's just to have something in the back, but it's really not necessary to do this part. Now it's all messy. So, whoops. So I have like a big mess here everywhere. Ah. Okay, maybe I should put things aside and hold the actual paper. So this is why it's not a great mat. It's not really even a mat, like somebody asked. It's an actual just paper. And this one will probably have to go after a while. Like I might use it a little bit more, but I can see that I've just kicked everything in here. All right, so, um, so let's review all the designs that we did so we don't forget what we did. Mm -hmm. Okay, starting with, where are all my designs? Okay, starting with the two different, this one is, the, okay, so let me just go with this. These two were done similarly where I sprayed the oxides and then using the stencil, we removed it with a baby wipe. So that worked really well. Uh, both, actually both ways worked really well, not with the water, but it did work really well with the baby wipe when it's wet. So that worked really well. Here is another example with different colors that I did. Okay, you see what happened here is it is Darlene. Yeah, that's what would happen if you spray directly as opposed to if you want to get this effect, then you need to like spray that with your hand or with a paintbrush. Otherwise, you're going to get this really big like blob. Uh, so but you can see the designs here. So this one is done like this. And this one was this is also done a similar way. So that works well. Uh, I also sprayed with just uh, with a stencil. So that is something that was done really easily. You can just spray through a stencil and then use the stem, same stencil if you want to create a separate background to mix it with the modeling paste and run it through. So uh, that works as well. Uh, what else did we do? We put, oh, we put modeling paste directly on the stencil and, sorry, with the stencil, a different one, and then used, uh, the distress sprays, the distress oxide sprays to create the background. So you can, again, it's pretty fixable. So things are fixable, which is nice. Um, here are some other mixtures of colors that I, we did, that I did. This one was another one that I kind of tried, okay? So this is just sprayed stencil, like kind of like this one. Okay, so you just kind of really see the designs. They work really, really well uh what else oh this is another i just wanted to tell you this is another um unrelated to today this is another thing we're going to try in our mix in the mixed media class and i'm going to like just show you now all the designs in a second uh what else so yeah i think those are all the oh no we did the first one how could i forget my, my favorite one look how pretty this is honestly like this is the squishing technique or whatever you want to call it. So we made all these really, really pretty designs. Really, really, really nice. I just don't even know, like, just with one medium, which is distressed oxide inks. Imagine all the possibilities that you can do with this if you have more than one medium. That's why mixed media is so amazing. So, um, yeah, I just want to remind you that if you do want to sign up for my mixed media class, we're gonna, uh, we, I'm gonna be working with 10 mixed media techniques. Although as you can see today, it's always gonna be more than 10 because I show you various variations, many variations of different techniques. Um, one of them is really how to kind of work with modeling paste. So there's gonna be like things like making marks and creating things like this. Uh, we're also going to uh, work with like modeling paste, but with other mediums. And also like all these techniques where you can, I'll show you. Um, we can really create texture for our backgrounds, whether you do cards, whether you do art journaling, even for a canvas, that works really well. So if you want to sign up, the link is below. It's also, um, I think Tiffany put it higher up. So you can like just go and uh, click on it. I'll try to share it. Uh, let me see if I can share it. 
let's see again and if you and then you just come to the class it's only twelve dollars and it's being held on march 23rd which is a saturday at 1 p.m it's around now basically uh, but on saturday uh, which is next week i guess yes and if you have any questions you can ask during the class or if you're coming oh i guess i could you could see me here or if you're coming afterwards to the zoom you can definitely ask questions save some questions that you've had that you maybe um don't know uh like you know you always wanted to ask so that we just get to know each other or just have fun because i feel like i'm always teaching here and i feel like i don't get to see you guys in person so that will be a really nice way of kind of getting together with you and and meeting you in person so i already have quite a few people signed up so you'll get to know a lot of people from all over the world and i hope to see you there and yeah i mean that's it if you have any questions you can also email me or message me on instagram or on um facebook and also if you do it if you make any designs or any backgrounds with these techniques and you want to tag me i would love that, that and i will share them on whatever it's on instagram facebook whatever you use so uh thank you thank you so much for coming today oh and this is my favorite pinky fingers yeah that's what we have usually uh so thank you so much to everyone who came today i really wanted to show you as many techniques as i could i'm not going to be uh working with distress oxide inks during the class because i did some of them here so there's no point in repeating them but we're gonna learn so many techniques you're gonna love thank you so much everyone and sending love to everyone and many blessings bye